Well, good morning. Happy Good Earth Day. Well, we're a couple of days late, but sometimes the calendar cooperates and sometimes it doesn't for Sunday. But welcome, one and all. And to our visitors today, welcome. Glad to see all of your faces today. We have a special worship service today, of course. Good Earth Day. Good Earth Day was officially Thursday, but we have a couple of days to get prepared for what we are going to have today. And I hate to tell you this, but um, you are all going to become parents again today because you are going to take home a new addition to your family. Uh, more about that a little bit later, but like your own children and grandchildren, you're going to need some nurturing skills to come back into play and some watering and some TLC. More about that later. A big welcome this morning to all of our folks watching on Facebook and Zoom. Glad that you're here this morning. Before we get started, as always, do we have any announcements that people would like to make? Anything going on in your life? Um, I know that we were collecting personal items for the food bank. Um, there is a basket out front, usually not for the, yes, for the food bank. You have some items that you still like to donate, please do so. Oh, big thing, I know Doris isn't here, but the garage sale's coming up, coming up the first Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday? Thursday and Friday in May, 9 to 4 o'clock. In case you haven't gone back to Fellowship Hall, we're collecting stuff. So if you have stuff, good stuff, bring her on in. Okay. So next Sunday, be here so you can help with getting ready, and I know Doris has probably been contacting a lot of you about um, volunteering for this event. Of course, all the money goes toward the congregators and the various projects that we have here at the church. So it's awesome. So if there are no an other announcements, uh, let's begin with a moment of silence to prepare ourselves for worship. Thank you. Well, we begin our Earth Day service today, and I direct your attention to the uh, screen. This is a wonderful picture that was taken by one of the Apollo moon landings back in the 70s. Looking back at this big blue marble that we call Earth, taken somewhere in the 70s. Uh, in the foreground is the moon, and I remember uh, Neil Armstrong commenting that this was one of the most awesome pictures for him and a lot of the uh, crew that was with him on that particular mission, as well as other astronauts that went to the moon. A wonderful picture. Puts in perspective a little bit about how large we are here on Earth, but when you look from afar, we are one but many celestial objects in the sky. And as we look at that planet that we call Earth, brings to mind this that I came across recently in social media. If you can't read it, I'll, I'll read it for you. We live on a blue planet that circles around a ball of fire next to a moon that moves the sea, and you don't believe in miracles. That kind of says it all. Let us pray to this wonderful prayer by a Lakota Indian chief, Yellow Lark. O great spirit, whose voice I hear in the winds and whose breath gives life to all the world, hear me. I am small and weak. I need your strength and wisdom. 
let me walk in beauty and make my eyes ever behold the red and purple sunset. Let my hands respect the things you have made and my ears sharp to hear your voice. the lessons you have hidden in every leaf and rock. I seek strength, not to be greater than my brother, but to fight my greatest enemy, myself. Make me always ready to come to you with clean hands and straight eyes. Straight eyes. So when the light fades, and as the fading sunset appears, my spirit may come to you without shame. Amen. Now would you please rise, please stand or stand in spirit as we begin our service with our call to worship. Lord, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. Praise the Lord, my soul. God makes springs pour water into ravines. It flows between the mountains. The birds nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. Lord, you water the mountains from the upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of your work. Praise the Lord, my soul. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that God planted. There the birds make their nests, the stork has its home in the junipers. Praise the Lord, my soul. May the glory of God endure forever, and may God rejoice in all of the Lord's works. Praise the Lord, my soul. The trees of the Lord are always well watered and taken care of, always. Praise the Lord. Now let's begin with our opening hymn. Ruth, are we familiar with this one? The Fruit of All Creation. the fruit of all creation, thanks be to God. Just reward of labor, God's will is done. In the help we give our neighbor, God will be done. In our worldwide task of caring for the hungry and despairing, in the harvest we are sharing, God's will is done. For the harvest of the Spirit, thanks be to God. For the good we all inherit, thanks be to God. For the wonders... Amen. I like that one too, Blakely. As folks who have come here today haven't fallen short, let us continue on with our prayer of confession. O God, maker of heaven and earth, you place us in your creation and command us to care for it. 
Your works declare glory and splendor, and you call us to praise and reverence. Where we have degraded heaven and earth and destroyed earth's bounty, forgive us. Majesty, for granted, have mercy on us. Where we have become estranged from the creatures with whom we share this planet, grant us your peace. Renew us in waters of baptism. Refresh us with the winds of your spirit. Sustain us with the bread of life. In the name of Jesus and for the sake of the new creation, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture this morning, which will be read by Jan, comes from a lot of different sources. And obviously, they have a theme of Earth Day. As you hear Jan read these words from the Bible this morning, meditate on them. Think about them and how they fit in with God's creation, which you are a part of. Jan? First, from the book of Genesis God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And God said, let the earth put forth grass, herb yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit after its kind. And it was so. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden. And there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. Joel said, Be glad, O land, and rejoice, for the Lord hath done great things. For the pastures of the wilderness are green with grass. The tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. The psalmist says, You shall be like a tree planted beside a river that brings forth its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither, and whatsoever you do shall prosper. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests. The stork has its home in the junipers. Jesus asked, what is the kingdom of God like? What shall I compare it to? It is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his garden. It grew and became a tree, and the birds perched in its branches. Again, he asked, what shall I compare the kingdom of God to? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. Jesus said he is the true vine and that his father is the dresser of the garden. Let the trees of the forest sing. Let them sing for joy before the Lord. Thank you, Jan. And Steve, thanks as always for the wonderful decorating today, bringing in some, some of God's creation here and bringing in the fresh flowers for the altar. You really uh, know how to dress the place up, Steve. Thank you. Thank you very much. So here we are at Earth Day. 2021. It's our third year of celebrating. And if you remember, we always try to focus on Earth Day or shortly thereafter, like we are today, of a particular aspect of God's creation. In the past, we focused on blessing of the seeds, blessing of the animals. Today, we zero, on, zero in on one particular area, trees 
trees. To borrow a little bit from that classic Frank Sinatra song, Love and Marriage, you can't have one without the other when it comes to trees. We need trees. Trees need us. We need each other to thrive, to grow, and to survive. Very, very important. Very important. And if we lose them, we are in trouble. So today we focus on trees. So a little bit about trees when it comes to Michigan. About 53% of our state is forested. The ownership comes down to something like this. Individual landowners, 45%. State, 20%. Federal, 14 Corporations, 11%. The forest industry, 8%. County and municipal governments, 2%. And the American Indian population, a little under about 0.1%. Some other interesting statistics. Each year, think about this, for every thousand trees in the forest, 39 new trees grow. 12 are harvested and 8 die naturally. All the wood in the Michigan forest, think about this. This is kind of one you really got to get your brain around. All the wood in Michigan's forests, if piled into a stack eight feet wide and four feet tall, would stretch over 250,000 miles or around Earth 10 times. Think about that. Michigan, by the way, has the greatest amount of forest growth in the nation. Each year, we add about 8,000 miles to that pile. And then here's the good stuff. Interesting, too. Trees are the longest living organisms on Earth. And unless they're cut down or they're damaged by the environment or other causes, they never die of old age. And of course, we know they have other benefits. While they live, they provide wildlife habitat, Shelter for us from hot days and high winds. Continuing on here in Michigan, and I know you've been around the state, you know the area. Here in the state, we manage the largest forest system in the nation, as I said before. If you're a factoid person, that's about 2.8 million acres that the state manages. We have six, six state forests, and we also have two national forests. And so here is where we are at today. It's something that we're going to look on throughout a lot of part of our service. But it's a key point from Genesis 126. God said, let us make mankind in our own image, in our own likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over the creatures that move along the ground. As you think of that quote, think again about the trees that you saw today. An essential part of creation. And creation is reflected back at God before we know it. And think about this. Creation is a reflection of God. God's character God's love and God's entire being. Trees and every aspect of creation, the mountains, the air we breathe, the mountain skies, the wildlife, the bugs, the ones that bite us, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, everything is from God. Think about that. Sometimes it's easy to take that for granted. All of it was planned by God. Here's the other thing that just blows me away many times. As you sit back on a nice day, maybe it's at the lake or you're walking in the forest and you see the bugs and the trees in the skies, think of this. They are all working together in unison for a purpose, working in relationship to one another. Think of this, the bees, when they're not stinging you, they pollinate the flowers, the crops. They help grow our plants. That's their purpose in life, to pollinate. Without them, our food supply would be devastated. Or how about what we sometimes think as bats and opossums? 
we might think of them as nuisance, bats flying around, opossums walking around. They eat bugs, the bugs we don't like. They eat the wood ticks that are a pain for us. So when we experience creation, my friends, from the bug, a warm sunny day, a mountain view, a sunset, waterfalls, the sound of a robin chirping in the morning, or a coyote howling at night, we experience the holy in our midst. Creation, the best way that I can describe it when it comes to us, is where heaven and earth meet. At one point, at one location, wherever we may be. A few months ago, my wife reminded me of something. It's a word I had not heard in a long time. She said that we have thin places, thin places, which to me meant an experience, a moment, a place where the barrier or the membrane, if you will, between heaven and holy is very thin or perhaps sometimes has no wall or barrier between either or they intersect. Thin places. I thought back to accounts of people who were close to death by days or hours or minutes and how sometimes they begin to see and hear and even taste the holy in their midst. And for the living, I can only say that I have felt the presence in one of these thin places of the holy and the now. Every time I have goosebumps on myself, they come up on my arms, those goosebumps, at a wonderful sunset or watching a robin pull a worm from the ground or hear the sound of those coyotes. To me, that is an intersection of the heaven and the holy on earth, the thin places. And when we experience that thin place, we feel like God was especially present in that moment, in that particular place. You feel special, very special, wonderful, amazed and grateful for seeing, hearing and touching a moment with God on this side of life. The Holy Spirit is in our midst in those moments. And that veil that separates the sacredness of God and the ordinary life is lifted, even if it's just for a split second or two. Wow! That's a wow moment! That's a wow moment! So that's why God asks us to be present so we can experience these moments, these thin places in life. And even more amazingly, God has us in charge of creation, as we see. We are in charge of earth, where the thin places intersect. And as members of creation who have been made in the image of God, like all members of creation that we see around us, we're in charge of protecting what we see, the trees and all that is in creation. And this is our reminder of our responsibility. Let us make Mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So, like we've done in our previous Earth Day celebrations, I ask this question. Why is humanity not doing a better job of caring for creation? Dr. Jane Goodall, who you remember, she's been doing a lot of work for more than 60 years, particularly with chimpanzees. She asked this question, how is it possible that the most intellectual creature to ever walk the planet Earth is destroying its only home? By all signs, our planet is straining. Or as Paul stated in Romans, the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. All because of humanity's activities that, is, that have caused problems 
in our world, our environment. And unfortunately, in too many cases, humanity has engaged in domination rather than careful domination of this earth that we have been given to oversee. Genesis 2, 1 through 15 calls on humanity to till and keep creation. It also calls us to marvel and love creation from the flowers and to the trees and all creatures in creation. If you remember your seven-day Sunday school narrative about Genesis, it talks about that. Genesis, if you read through it about creation and the stories there, does not inspire a spirit of superiority, a, distant, a distance of domination or exploitation. In Genesis, the seven-day narrative is inspired by, testifies to, and hopes to inspire a spirit immediately seized by divine love. I think you know this, but it bears worth repeating today that our earth is facing various and serious challenges that are worth highlighting. Those challenges start with the overall state of our planet today. Now, you can call the state of our earth climate change, global warming, normal temperatures, climate hysteria, or whatever label you feel comfortable with. But regardless, something is happening to our planet, and it's not good. It's not good. And we should be alarmed as the ones in charge of our planet. Regardless of our opinions and our labels, we agree, we should agree, that caring for our planet is important. As Christians, just as Christians alone, we cannot ignore the prospect that the environment is being harmed by our industrial and consumer way of life. We've known that something's been happening to our Earth for years. Back in 2001, 2,500 scientists in the International Panel of Climate Change confirmed what many expected was happening. Humanity is contributing to a rapid change in our climate. And anyone, think about this. You walk into a greenhouse. We all have seen that. And you can understand the reality of what's happening to our planet, as the scientists pointed out. Think about this. Just as a greenhouse traps in heat, the greenhouse gases of our atmosphere trap in the heat that causes higher temperatures in our planet. Due in large part to our use of fossil fuels in, uh, used in cars and to help generate our power. All of that traps in more heat. And the result is not only higher temperatures, but a change in weather. And of course, apart from that, human activities contribute. Methane, greenhouse gases are added by human activity. Gases like methane, nitrogen dioxide, and synthetic chemicals. Now, though the amount of these chemicals is much less than CO2, they still absorb more heat than CO2 and add significantly to the problem we face. So whether you believe what's happening right now is normal or not, here's what many believe has and continues to occur that is not normal and are some of our Earth Day challenges to note. Higher temperatures are leading to melting ice caps and subsequently rising water levels. Many communities located on our oceans are preparing for rising water levels. The city of Miami, which has always, for example, been vulnerable to hurricanes and flooding, they've recognized what's going on the higher temperatures. Miami is taking steps toward implementing many different actions and proposals to address these rising water levels, storm sewer overflow and backup. Another challenge for Earth Day, extreme weather, sudden storms, fierce tornadoes, severe and more frequent flooding, long periods of prolonged heat. And of course, as we know so well from being around here, there's an impact on farming. Our farmers are all too familiar with what's going on. They are on the front line, think about that. 
Extreme weather can damage crops and limit the ability of natural systems to adapt. It goes without saying that a drop in food production is not an option if we are to feed all of humanity. Extreme heat has also dried up water supplies. And of course, clean, accessible water is something we all need. And then the result of the extreme periods of heat, we have wildlife in many areas of the world migrating to different places. And with rising temperatures, insects and rodents are moving into different areas. I remember last summer reading a story from uh, the MSU Extension Office how wood ticks are going farther and farther north, where before cold climates would wipe them out. Those cold climates, like for example the UP, are seeing more wood ticks than before. To put it all in perspective, scientists have estimated that greenhouse gas emissions must be reduced by at least 60% to stabilize their concentrations in the atmosphere. Another Earth Day challenge, deforestation. In particular, I focus today, I don't know if any of you have ever visited the Amazon rainforest, but in the Amazon we have deforestation going on. And you might say, well, why should I care? Why should I care with what's going on in the Amazon rainforest? Well, the rainforest is the largest in the world, and it res represents, think about this, the Amazon rainforest represents over half of the Earth's rainforests, and it has the most biodiverse tract of tropical rainforest and habitat in the world. The Amazon rainforest, my friends, is slowly being deforested, primarily by two causes. The cattle sector, of course, for food, but for the leather trades, 80% of all deforestation in the Amazon rainforest has resulted in these two causes. And the latest statistics are hard to come by, but as far back as 2017, it's been estimated that about 3,050 square miles of the forest was destroyed just in one year. Expanding agriculture is also encroaching on the rainforest. And it's been suggested at some point that rainforest will reach a tipping point where it will no longer be able to produce enough rainfall to sustain itself. So rainforests are important not only to the people in that area and the indigenous Native Amer Indian population and the people, but the rainforest, my friends, plays a crucial role in the world ecosystem because those trees, like the trees in our own backyard, absorb heat, give out oxygen. They also store, like our trees in our backyard, they store our carbon dioxide and ensure that less carbon is released, mitigating the effects of what's going on in our planet today. I only hit on just a couple of the key points the key threats that are facing our planet on this Earth Day. There are many more. But the bottom line is this. Every member of creation, including us, will be impacted unless these threats to our planet are addressed. Jesus said, help our neighbors, especially the poor among us, those especially people and nations lacking the technical, financial, and social resources to adopt that many are already impact doing, implementing like us. And as we've seen on the news, those who are economically disadvantaged, especially the elderly and the children, they're disproportionately affected by these heat waves, these storms, the floods. The issue of global warming, climate change, whatever name you want to put on it, it's not just a scientific study of temperature charts and chemical concentrations. It's also a situation of God's people facing economic and financial hardship, and it's a threat to God and creation itself. So with all that bad news, what can we do? What can one person do? 
What can we do? Hope is not lost. Hope is not lost if we collectively, as a planet of people, act soon. But we don't have an infinite amount of time to do so. I strongly believe, with all my spirit and all my heart, that we as individuals, as Christians, cannot stay silent or remain idle. Not as a church, but as individuals and, Christ and Christians, we cannot remain silent on this issue while our planet suffers. When we do nothing or say nothing, I really believe that we hurt creation and we hurt God. We hurt God. So what can we do? What can an individual do? A lot. A lot. For starters, engage with your state and federal policymakers, the ones who introduce bills and actions that can impact our planet and that address what's going on with our planet. Write to them. Speak to them. Let them know that you're engaged, you're watching, and you're concerned. And do the small things. Recycle paper, can, and bottles, especially the plastic that litters our roadways and ends up around the necks of wildlife on our lakes and oceans or around the necks of turtles. You have a handout that was given today as you came in today that details the nearest recycling center in Lapeer County. I urge you to take a look at that. And one final thing that you can do. One final thing. Plant a tree. Plant a tree. Trees, if you remember minutes ago, we talked about with what's happening with our planet. They reduce the effect of what's going on with our planet. A mature tree can absorb more than 48 pounds of carbon dioxide each year, removing and storing carbon while releasing oxygen back into the air. And here's one, and Blakely knows this. One large tree can provide a day's supply of oxygen for up to four people. A mature tree, of course. But think about that. Trees have other benefits that help the planet. They offer us personal benefits. Benefits that perhaps we haven't really thought about. The denser a forest. Scientists have found when we walk in those dense forests, it lowers our stress. Walk down a tree-lined street sometime in Imlay City. Concentrate on that. Did you know, too, that trees release a chemical? I'm going to slaughter the name, phytomicides. Somebody have a better term? I'm up for it. They re release a chemical. And when we breathe in this chemical, it can reduce our blood pressure, lower our anxiety levels, increase our pain threshold. Trees. The trees need us for protection, and we need them. We need them for protection from the heat, the wind, and for our health, and in order to offer our children and our grandchildren a bright future, my friends. God asks, what are we saying and doing for creation as individual people and as Christians? One person can make a difference. Many people together can do even greater things for Mother Earth. The time to act is now for the sake of our planet, our trees, and ourselves. Amen. Now, would you please sit with me? Hymn number 311, All Things Bright and Beautiful. 31, thank you. All things.
things bright you Tiny wings, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, our dear God made them all. The purple headed mountain, the river running by the sunsets and the morning sky that brightens up the sky. Creatures great and small. Our dear God made them all. The cold wind in the winter, the pleasant summer sun, the ripe fruits in the garden, God made them. Let us pray. God, this morning we gather on our good Earth Day service. We thank you for creation. We thank you for all that it has and continue to provide us, for our families, the people around us, for our children and our grandchildren. On this day in particular, we ask you to embolden us even further as individuals to care for creation this wonderful place we call earth that you have left us in charge of. Help us to see your vision and empower us to do your work with the help of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we thank you this morning for all the one small, big, and large work that we do as individuals to help this planet. And we praise those that create the policies and implement them to protect the earth in ways that we have no idea or understand. Help us so that we can save this wonderful blue marble for all to enjoy. Work with us and help us. Lord, on this sunny day, we praise you for all the wonderful gifts and the blessings that you continue to bestow on us. We also thank those that are working hard to protect us from the public health community. We also mourn those who have lost loved ones for whatever reason. We ask you to be with them. We ask you to be with those that are worried in other areas of their lives. Hear their cries and comfort them. Address their concerns. And Lord, we give you thanks for all those that protect us as well in the military, keep us safe, and also for the doctors and the frontline workers, the EMTs that work today in the pandemic. And Lord, we pause now and either silently or out loud give you our own prayers and petitions on this morning.
Lord. We thank you for hearing our prayer. We thank you for comforting us. And as we look out today outside the walls of the sanctuary, again, we marvel at your creation of how you weave together the intricate and the easy through a tapestry of life. Again, teach us to respect the fragile balance of life and care for the gift of your creation. For you have called us to tend and keep the garden of your creation. Again, give us wisdom and reverence for all the trees and the plants and the animals who share this planet with us. And help us to remember that they too love the sweetness of life and join with us in giving you praise. And now, Lord, we praise you supremely with the prayer that your son taught us. So we say together, our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This offering prayer I offer up today on behalf of us all. God of great gift, this morning we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you thanks with the resurrection humming in our hearts. Our minds are tuned to your song of peace and your creation. Lord, we joyfully present these gifts to you. A tangible chorus of thanksgiving, a harmony of hope for your kingdom to come. Amen. So, this morning, we have an interesting gift that we will be giving you. Today, you will be receiving, receiving a white pine tree seedling to plant as part of our Good Earth Day celebration today. Some interesting information in case you're wondering about the white pine seedling. Michigan designated the white pine seedling as the official state tree back in 1955 as a symbol of our state's rich logging history. White pine was the focal point of Michigan's lumber industry in the early days. From the 1860s until the 1890s, Interesting stat, Michigan led the nation in lumber production. And so today, as a sign of our commitment to caring for the trees of God's creation, you're going to have the opportunity to plant one of these white pine seedlings that we have here on our communion table. Each of you is going to get one today. Jesus reminded us that a mustard seed can grow into something much bigger. Seeds, and these seedlings in particular, speak of hope, of an investment in the future. And although our world sees continued deforestation and destruction, we can make a difference by something as simple and as small as planting and nurturing a tree. Wangari Matate, a Nobel Prize winning Kenyan who inspired planting millions of trees, said Christ was crucified on the cross. I always say somebody had to go into the forest, cut a tree, and chop it up for Jesus to be crucified. What a great celebration of his conquering death. And so now as we look at these seedlings, they are very small. As I said, this is your nurturing 
project for the next couple of years of your life. Take good care of this. They are fragile, but with your help, covering and a good spot in your backyard or somewhere. And if you live in an apartment, I'm sure there is a grandchild or a child that has a great spot for this in their backyard. So no excuses if you live in an apartment. You still got to see that one of these seedlings you will get today will be planted. And so, as we look at this seedling, I offer this blessing for all of our seedlings today. Let us commit ourselves to thanksgiving for God's gift of trees and to growing these seedlings in creation. Lord, bless these seeds, grant them fertility and steady growth. Bless them. May they be signs of your kingdom, a kingdom which starts with the small and the weak, but grows in secret, and one day will fill the whole of creation. Lord, may these seedlings, these saplings, if you will, grow to have deep roots and spreading branches, and may they bear wonderful arms, wonderful roots, wonderful leaves and branches. May they be a home to creatures, and a blessing to the community of creation. And may we remember to care for them, to water and tend them, and may they teach us about our dependence on trees and on you. Creator God, you planted in Eden a garden and placed us within this garden to serve and preserve it. Lord, forgive us when we have turned the beauty and the wonderful nature of creation into infertile deserts. Sow within us, once again, the seeds of our calling to be good stewards of this created world. And finally, God, may we know our dependence upon you and upon creation. And through our work, we praise once more we give to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God and forever. Now, would you please stand as we sing our closing hymn? It is our closing hymn. Help me out, Ruth. Touch the earth lightly. Lightly, use the earth gently, nourish the life of the in our care. Render trust for the children. Tomorrow. seed rain the snow and the sun teach us deflect us deflect us using us gently and making us one 
The slide that you see here was taken by myself a few years ago on the top of Sugarloaf Mountain in the upper peninsula of Michigan, one of the more grandest view of trees that are part of creation that I can think about. Before I send you off on our day and to enjoy Earth Day and to give you my benediction, following the benediction, I'd like you to do two things. I would like you to come up here, take a seedling, and take a handout that will show you how to plant your seedling and give you some more statistics to go with what you have in your hand flyer that I think was given out to everybody. And then, in about 10 minutes, uh, for those of you who could please stay, and I hope you'll all stay, I would love for our newsletter, for our Facebook page, I would love to take a picture of us distanced out a little bit outside in the courtyard in 15 minutes with our seedlings. I would invite one and all to, to do that, get a little fresh air, it's getting warmer, and enjoy, I guess, what I would call a nurturing party to get ready to plant these trees that will be with us long after we leave this earth. And so now, my friends, may the word of God take root in your heart, grow strongly in your life, and bear much fruit for God's kingdom. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and with all of God's creation forever and evermore. Amen.